curved shapes. And I get a see-through mask of my own face, which will come in very handy if I ever want to pretend to be myself. But once the museum's skeleton was built, there was a new problem. What should cover the steel frame and clad the building? Gary wanted something that looked alive. But when the Guggenheim was built in the 1990s, Bilbao was a port city with a highly polluted atmosphere. What material would give the shimmering, breathing feel that Gary wanted, but still be robust enough to withstand Bilbao's corrosive atmosphere? For the answer, the architects looked to a Russian submarine. Rewind to the Cold War, behind the Iron Curtain. The Russians had a secret weapon that put them leagues ahead of the Americans under the sea, titanium. It's one of the most common metals on Earth, but it's hard to extract from ore and equally hard to work. But the Russians persevered and pioneered its use to make submarine hulls. It is amazing stuff, titanium, because it is so light and so strong for its weight, which is what makes it ideal for making high-performance cars as well as submarines, and for cladding a building like the Guggenheim. Titanium is as strong as steel, but much lighter, so the Russian subs could operate faster and deeper than the Americans. But just how much better is titanium? I've got a great idea for finding out. I'm going to do something I've always wanted to have a go at. A bit of safe blowing. But I'm going to need some space and a few friends. One simple, short experiment can show the comparative advantages of titanium over steel with ease and a small explosion. It's a sturdy thing, isn't it? The safe has been reinforced with six millimeters of steel and inside it is 12 grams of explosive, which will produce the same pressure as a submarine feels 100 meters under the sea. Explosive expert Mark Skuse is here to make sure I don't go bang with it. First, I'm going to see how steel copes with the pressure, so I've replaced the door with a thin steel plate. Now, this, of course, is an unusual piece of safe blowing compared to the norm, because we had to actually open the safe to put the explosive charge in it and then close it. We've put our steel door on the front. Are we done? We're done. You want to take the igniter wire? Ah, right. Um, can this go bang now? No, it can't go bang. Will these glasses protect me if it does? <laughs> OK, this is the box of tricks. OK, if you want to turn the system on, make sure everyone is well back out of the way. Uh, if everybody wants to get back and be safe, please, um, it will avoid a lot of paperwork. With the explosion rigged and my helpers at a safe distance, it falls to me to do the honours. Three, two, one... OK, results for the steel door pretty clear. That clearly, uh, it's gone. It's gone. Where's it gone? <laughs> no the idea. The door's gone. It's gone. It's just blown clean off. Yeah, I think that's what we've done there. Is expose perhaps the limitation of steel in this particular application. So what we need to do now is gather everything up, tidy up, and get set to do this again with the titanium door. The team rigged the safe exactly as before. Same charge, same safe. The only difference is the door. This time, it's made from titanium. This is actually the best job, and they've given it to me as a sign of respect. And to make it a fair comparison, I've used the same weight of titanium as I did steel. Three, two, one... Lots of smoke in the air, but not much cash. So, that was contained within a steel safe, our explosive, which means a tremendous pressure on the titanium door, and it was only about this thick, and it's fine. Look at that. That is pretty strong stuff, and it's, okay, it's not a complicated demonstration, it's fairly simple, we just blew a safe with titanium on the front of it, but really to see it graphically demonstrated like that, that's some strong stuff.
Well, I don't think this could be any clearer, could it, really? Equal weight of metals, titanium and steel. Equal charge, 12 grams of flash powder in both instances. The titanium bowed out a bit, but held strong. The steel, we found 20 metres away, shredded. So there's no doubt, titanium, light and very strong. But that's not all the Russians noticed about it. They knew it didn't corrode, making it perfect for protecting their subs from seawater and the Guggenheim from pollution. Titanium reacts easily with oxygen to form a thin surface layer of titanium oxide. Once there, this layer stops it from corroding. But the Russian sailors had noticed another peculiar effect. The oxide layer had caused the titanium on their submarines to change colour. One lot called their sub the Golden Fish. Might not be a useful feature on a war machine, but perfect when it comes to coating an art gallery. This effect meant titanium was the only choice to finish his masterpiece. Fernando Perez is one of the architects who worked with him. We explored a number of uh, different materials, stainless steel with different finishes, you know, very shiny, aluminum, you know, too flat, you know, not uh, alive. One day, Gary's people came with uh, one idea. Okay, you know, we've brought a sample of titanium. Ty what? You know, we thought, oh my God, these guys are crazy. What did titanium do when you brought a piece of it down here and looked at it? What, why did you think, yes, let's use that? The main thing is that the material is uh, alive. You know, unlike uh, any of the other samples we had, then suddenly this material reflects light in a completely different way. Gary's pursuit of perfection led to some pretty unusual tasks for his colleagues. I remember standing there up uh, with a ladder and Frank Gary is staying like 30 meters away and me pointing with a pencil and him looking at the reflection of the pencil on the, on the metal panel and that was very, very subtle. Very so hang on, the building's here going up rapidly, mm -hmm. contractors are here and you're standing down here That's right. with, <laughs> with a piece of this holding a pen That's right. so that he can see how it looks. Yes. The effect of this surface is remarkable. It looks like thousands of fish scales and then you only have to start moving. And it all looks like it's changing color. It is stunning. It happens because titanium reflects light in an unusual way, the same way as bubbles do. White light, as we all know, is made up of lots of different colors, all the colors of the rainbow. That's where they come from. And when it strikes either a bubble or the titanium surface of the Guggenheim, some of it is reflected back straight away off the skin. That's the oxide layer in the case of the museum. Some of it is reflected from further down. And those different reflections can interfere with one another. Some light reflects from the outside surface of the bubble. Some passes through to the inner surface and is reflected from there. When the two reflected beams cross paths, some light gets cancelled out. And if you take away some light from white light, you see coloured light instead where I can see yellow on the surface of the bubble or the museum, the blue wavelengths are being cancelled out. Where I see green, the magenta wavelengths are being cancelled out, and so on. It is really rather beautiful and can be used to great artistic effect. The thinnest oxide layer gives a pale gold colour that Gary loved, and it's also protective. So thanks to a Russian submarine, the Guggenheim will glisten in Bilbao for years to come. Using titanium tiles gave Frank Gehry the magical look he wanted, but it also gave him an additional problem. In fact, pinning them to the steel structure gave him 264,000 additional problems. That'll be the 264,000 holes made by screwing them in place, each hole ready to let in water. 